This is Annie McHale. Welcome into my weaving room. I'd like to share with you something that I think is a pretty fantastic tool that I've been using a lot. It's a free online tool called the Pattern Editor. It was created by Jeff Bigo. And you can find it at the web address at the bottom of the screen. I first learned about this tool in 2018 when I was working on my book in celebration of plain weave. The page on the right is one of my favorite pages from the book. It shows the same pattern in 12 different colorways, which is a very easy thing to do using this tool. The pattern editor allows you to create a pattern in plain weave or several different types of pickup. Today I'm only going to talk about plain weave. Once you've created the pattern, you can rotate or shuffle the colors in various different combinations. You can save the pattern to your computer or to the website. You can recall it at any time to use it again, edit it, or print it. One of the things that I think is really cool about this is that the cells in the graphic are very similar in shape to what a thread looks like in a woven band. So when you create a graphic, it is a very close representation of what your band is going to look like. In this pattern on the left, once I got to the loom, I changed it up a little bit. Um, so it's not identical, but it still gives me a starting point. This is a really big switch up for me because for many, many years, I have been spontaneously designing when I set up my loom. And I kind of know what the pattern is going to look like, but I'm sometimes surprised. Now, because I have this tool, and it's so easy to use, I find myself previewing patterns more and more. It's especially helpful to me because I weave a lot of commission pieces and I can show the customer the design before I even get to the loom. Around the graphic, there's some information for you. Up at the top are some boxes that show the colors that you use and the number of threads in each color. In the graphic itself, the top two rows represent the warping draft or how you'll set up your loom. And below that is a drawdown, which is the preview of what your pattern will look like when it's woven. At the bottom, there is a QR code and a link. Either one of those will get you back to that same pattern on the website so you can use it again, maybe edit it. Along the left side are a bunch of blocks and if you turn the page 90 degrees you'll see that that is the warping draft again in block form. You see this in a lot of inkle weaving books. The pattern is represented by blocks with white spaces in between. Now, the white spaces in between just make it a little bit easier for you to see those colors when you're warping the loom. They don't give you a good preview of what your pattern is going to look like but they're really helpful when you're setting up the loom. The tool is free and you don't need to register on the site to use it, but by registering as a user, you can have a couple extra options. You're allowed to save your patterns to the gallery, either in a public or a private view. You can see patterns saved by other users and you can access the list of yarn colors and codes. A couple of weeks ago, I did a tutorial. It's in the format of a four page PDF. It's instructions for using the pattern editor and you're welcome to print that out or save it to your computer for your own use. I'll show you how to find that. What I'd like to do today is show you how to register on the site, where to find the latest news in Jeff's blog, how to access and download the PDF versions of instructions, access the list of yarn colors and see a gallery of patterns. I'll do a little demo showing you how to select the number of threads, choose some display options, choose colors, clear the pattern to start with a blank grid, how to create a symmetrical pattern by only drawing on one half and having the design automatically mirrored on the other half, 
how to change your pattern using the shuffle and rotate features, how to save your pattern, and to download it. On the internet, colors are displayed uh, using a coding system. And this website uses hex codes, which are six character codes. There is a built-in color chooser and it operates on this coding system. But if you like to explore colors like I do, there are all kinds of sites where you can look at hex colors and choose maybe colors that you like better. The color chooser is a little bit small, so you can expand your color world if you want to. On the website, I mentioned a list of yarn colors. This is something that Jeff was kind enough to create for me because I use a lot of the yarn Omega Sinfonia in my weaving. So you can see kind of in the central column, those are the, the manufacturer's color numbers for the yarn and the, the color names. And over on the right, there are the six digit codes that most closely represent those colors. Okay, so with that, I'm going to switch over and give you a little live demo. If you go to the web address rakteres.net, that will land you in the right place. It's in French and there are many things on the website, but have no fear, just click right here into the band weaving pattern editor. And when you do that, here is what you'll get. I want to point out that besides this, there are many other things that you might find useful. If you click on the news tab, you can read Jeff's blog. And in it, there are articles about whatever he's working on. Here's some about trying out different kinds of looms. He also talks about new features that he adds to the site and all kinds of interesting things. I want to point out that the most recent post on this blog is about the tutorial that I did on how to use the site. So if you get to that page, here's a link to the instructions. And here's what they look like. You're able to save that to your computer or print it. If you click on the gallery, you must sign in or register on the site to use it. I'm already signed in, so it says here, log out. But if you're new to the site, it will say here, register. Once you do that, you can look at this public gallery and here are some designs that other people have created and saved. Very fun to see how different people use different color. And also there are some more things here in a drop down menu. So I want to show you the list of yarns. This was in the slide that I sh that I showed. So I can choose any of these codes to carry over to the website. So let me just go ahead and highlight one of those codes while I'm here. I do a control C and then I'm going to grab it and take it back over to the pattern editor with me. Um, I'll show you what to do with that in a little bit. What I'd like to do is go through all the um, control panel over here on the left side. It's composed of a bunch of little toolboxes or windows that you can open up and each one has some different things in it. So let's go through those and really see what's here. The first one is edit mode and you can see that the the selector is on plane and colors. This means we're going to be creating a plain weave pattern. If I wanted to do a pickup, I could click in one of these other little ones, but I'm, I don't want to do that. I do want to point out this at the very bottom, there's a checkbox here. It says symmetrical click. And when I click in that box and select that, that means anything that I um, change over here is going to be reflected over here. 
very helpful. Now I'm done with this part of the control panel. I'm going to click on the title there and that closes it. I'll click on the next one down, display options, and open it up. The first thing here is a checkbox that says color code. And I want you to watch what happens right here when I click in that box. What it does is display the six digit codes that I've used for those colors. Really helpful if I want, if I'm going to save this pattern and, and use those colors again. So some other things here, I can change the way the display looks a little bit. I can zoom in on it to make it look smaller on the page. I can change the width of the individual cells. I can change the length of the individual cells. And I can change the shape of the individual cells. And also the very last thing is another checkbox. So I want you to watch what happens right here when I click in that checkbox. It says white borders. Now the outline of each of the cells is turned to white. This is very helpful if you're using a lot of dark colors in your design. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and turn it back to black. Now I've done everything I want to do in this part of the control panel. I'm going to click and close that. The next thing is the global color palette. You want to think of this, um, this here as being all the yarns that you have in your yarn stash. And below that is the loom color palette, which has the yarns that are on your table next to your loom that you're actually going to use in this design. To use colors in your design, you have to take them from the closet in the other room and add them to your loom color palette by bringing them to the table. So anything that's up here can be added to here. These are the colors you can work with. You can add to your global color palette anytime. And here's where I'm going to click in this color chooser box. So right now there's a number in there, but I can delete that number. And here I'm going to paste the number I grabbed from that yarn color chart, control V, and that puts that purple color in there that I selected. I can lighten and darken that color if I want to and go ahead and add it. When I click add, the color comes right down here to the bottom of my global color palette. If I click in this box, the uh, color chooser comes up, which I mentioned, and in the color chooser, you can, um, oopsie, you can scroll around and pick anything you want and then lighten or darken it. When you get to something you want, click add and it comes here to the bottom of the global color palette. If there's anything in here you're not going to use and you'd like to get rid of, you can just click on that, highlight it and remove. So I might want to take a couple of these out of here um, just so I don't have too many colors I'm looking at at the same time. But anything from here, I click add to get it down to here. And again, if there's anything I don't like here, I can click on it and remove. Now I want to show you the um, some of the tools here in the Loom Color Palette. I've got a pattern here, but what happens if I rotate the colors? What that does is moves through, it cycles through the colors here and substitutes different colors in the place of the ones that were there. So it, it can be really interesting to do this. You can come up with some designs you might even like better by rotating. Uh, and shuffle is the same sort of thing. It, it moves them in a, into different positions. Okay. Um, since I'm done with this for now, I'm going to close that. 
And then I want to show you the loom parameters. The loom parameters is where you select how many colors or how many threads, how many warp threads are in your design. So the default setting is 41, but I can add more one at a time, or I can add more 10 at a time, and I can subtract. There's also a comment box here. So if I am gonna save this pattern, here is where I can add some comments. So say I'm working on a particular belt for Tim. I'm gonna make that notation in there and click on the set button. That means that whenever I save this pattern, that information is gonna be saved with it. Okay, so I'm done with this part of the control panel. I'm gonna click and close it and open up the tools section. The top of this tools section, I have some different buttons. Um, what happens if I click symmetry? Oh, that's gonna take what's there and turn it into a symmetrical pattern. Um, I can move the pattern to the left, I can move the pattern to the right, I can move it down or up. And the reset button is very helpful. That clears the design, turns all the cells to one color only. And it's gonna be this color over here on the left. Now, some people I know like to use white when they clear the pattern, so it looks like a blank sheet of paper. So let me just show you that. I'm gonna click on the white here and add it to my loom color palette, and then I'm gonna rotate till it comes into the first position. Now I've got a clean blank white slate for starting a new pattern. I'm just gonna show you these real quick. If I wanted to do a Baltic pickup pattern, I could click there and now I've got the base for that Baltic pickup using the first two colors over here in my color loom color palette, or I could um, do a horizontal bar, just a, a beginning base for designing that way. But we're not gonna do that today. I'm gonna close that toolbox right now and now open the save and export button. So this is what allows you to save the design to your computer and print it out thereafter if you want to. The first thing I'm gonna do is click on save and then I'll get a little pop-up window here which gives me two codes. The first one at the top is a link and that will help me get back to that pattern here on the site. The second code here for characters will allow me to register it on the site and save it on the site. So I'm gonna click OK to that message. And the next thing I wanna do is uh, create a picture. And I can create that in either PNG form or JPG form. You may have a preference. Um, I am gonna use the JPG. So by clicking on that, I get another little pop-up window and it tells me it's um, saved the, sh the link and created the picture for me. So when I click OK there, I'm duplicating the pattern down here below. And the reason that I wanna do that is that's where I get to save it from my computer. By right-clicking on this pattern, I can say save image as and then I can give it a name here if I want to, and I can tell my computer where to save that. So when I click save, that downloads to my computer. And one more thing I'm gonna point out before I go that I mentioned this is a free tool and Jeff has done a ton of work creating it and offering it to everyone. So if you use it and you find it helpful, don't hesitate to click on this button here and give him a little tip to support his efforts. Thank you all for joining me.